G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. You've seen a lot of this thing recently. It's a DYS Lightning 210. And this is my final thoughts on this craft. And the fact that I've made now four videos on this thing shows the amount of time I have put into trying to make the damn thing work. And I'm giving up. <laughs> really, I am. Um, I am so bitterly disappointed in this piece of kit because it's got so much potential. Now, I'll tell you what I've done today. Uh, in the last flight video, as you saw, th 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 there's something wrong with the video. It's got way massive patterning um, interference, little speckles and things start appearing, especially as the battery starts to get down. That indicates poor power filtering. And also, I think it's possibly due as well to the fact that the video signal routing is not good in here. I replaced the little, the, those, that dual band piece of rubbish that they provided with the Pagoda antennas that I'm testing out and that solved the dropout problems. So it's full marks to those Pagoda antennas. The, I got a consistent signal but it was still filled with electrical noise from the internals of this machine. So, you know, uh, really, really, you, this flies fantastic line of sight but I cannot FPV it. I mean, I just cannot. It, the picture signal degrades so quickly that you can't fly it FPV. Now, I looked in the instructions and they say the video transmitter can be switched between 20 and 200 milliwatts. And I thought, well, maybe it's switched to the wrong thing, but they don't tell you how to do it. And you cannot get at the video transmitter. It's buried underneath the PDB in here. Now, even just getting to the insides of this is a pain in the ass because you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve screws to undo just to get this top frame off. And that doesn't give you as much access as you might think because the video transmitter is underneath the PDB that's inside. In fact, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, only four of these bolts are standard three millimeter uh, metric bolts, you know, sort of actual bolts rather than screws. Uh, they're easy to get out. That's quick and easy. It doesn't take long to take those little babies out, right? As you can see, I'll just take the antenna off because we're going to have to remove that to take the top plate off. Here we go. So I'll take out the... It's only got four standoffs, as I said, which is not enough. It's not enough. Plastic sides are too wibbly-wobbly to provide much in the way of support, so that creates a weakness in the frame design. Bad engineering. Now I've taken out those four. Now I've got to use a one millimetre hex key to take out the other screws. And as we all know, one millimetre hex keys round off. This is, these are Bond House, good quality, but they round off very quickly, the one millimetre. So I can't actually use the ball end. I've got to use this end. And look, here we go. These are so damn fiddly. Get them started and, okay, got to undo that. And this is just screwing into plastic. So constant screwing and unscrewing of these, the plastic will wear out. It's not like you're screwing into a metal thread. So there's only so many times you can take this top plate off before the plastic you're screwing into is buggered. And this is pitched as a race quad. Now, race quads, when you're racing, you can have the top and top off a lot of times as you fart around with stuff and if you have a crash and you have to replace stuff, but actually if you have a crash, you're wasting your time because it's proprietary ESCs and that PDB, again, it's a proprietary part, so you're not going to be able to replace much. And replacement is not easy anyway because of the way it's all designed. Now look, here we go. If I was if I was between race heats right now, I'd be spitting because this has taken way too long to get these bits off. And those little screws, so easy to lose if you're out in the... Oh, that one fell somewhere. There we go. So easy to lose if you're out in the field. It's silly. We don't want this in a race quad. So this is not a race quad. I'm telling you now, even if it goes fast, it's not a race quad. So it's being missold by DYS. Here we go. Oop, another one fell out somewhere. There we go. So we're still... Oh, I'm going as fast as I possibly can and I'm still struggling here. Come on. It's oop, getting a one mil wrench in a one mil hole. Not easy. It's one half mil, I think. Here we go. Come on. Oop. Can you sense the frustration levels rising here? You should be able to because I've done this so many times already that I'm sick and tired of it. Let's have a look. Nearly there. Right. Undo the battery strap. Now this comes off and the camera unplugs. Oops, I moved right out of shot there. Camera unplugs. This comes through the slot there. There we go. So as I say, if you want to, let me just tighten up a bit here because I want to show you what I'm talking about. The video transmitter obviously is 
under there, right? But to get under there, I have to remove the PDB from the carbon frame. Now, there are some screws under here. Um, where are we? Well, the screws on the top. I'm going to use my hex wrench. I'm going to undo those. These are special big flat headed screws. And to be fair, they do go into a metal threaded insert on the carbon. So, yeah, they're a hefty size screw. But I think there are only four of them, which means it's basically pivoted over a long distance by two support points. Here we go. And maybe this will prove me wrong. Maybe this will just pop right off, but I don't think so. <laughs> Let's find out. Remember, all I want to do is change the power setting on the video transmitter. It's all I want to do here. It's not brain surgery. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I don't want to come up with something fantastic and new. I just want to do something that says in the advertising I can do. Uh, that's about as far out as it's going to come. And no, look, I cannot go any further because if we look quite carefully here, these wires here, which come through the side there, uh, they have to be unsoldered so I can lift this PDB off the frame member and get to the underside. There's no other way to get to the underside. So my video transmitter is sitting in the back here, as you can see, but I've got no way. There are some dip switches here which allow me to change the frequency, but I'm just going to pull this off because I'm probably never going to fly this thing again because I don't want to fly a line of sight everywhere. I want to fly FPV. And I'll show you that under the Velcro here, there's no special hidden trap door. Oh man, the Hobby King Velcro is pretty damn good. There we go. As you can see, there are no special trap doors. There's nothing under there. So you can't change any aspect of the video except the dip switch is there. So, and I can't get this out because the ESC wires are holding it. That, that's crap. That's just not the way to build a racing quad. And as I say, the problem we've got here is we've got a video camera up here connected to this connection. The video signal travels all the way down here. Then it travels all the way down the PDB, all the way down there. Meanwhile, we've got ESCs on top of it. We've got a flight controller on top of it. More ESCs on top of it before it gets to the video transmitter. By the time it gets here, it has been utterly blasted with electromagnetic interference from all these high current conductors related to the ESCs and so forth. So naturally, you're going to get a shit video picture. It's just badly designed. If you're going to run a video signal of that length, you need to put it in a coaxial cable so it's screened from those sources of interference. Otherwise, you'll get rubbish, and that's what we've got here. So, DYS, they make some good stuff. I love their props. Their props are brilliant. But when it comes to making a racing quad, they haven't got a clue. Honestly, they don't. Um, this is, yet, as I said, this is really fast, really powerful, but I cannot fly at FPV. I cannot fly at FPV. This camera also, I've seen these cameras used elsewhere. Um, I think RC Timer used these. They've got, I mentioned I had trouble, no colour. There's a little switch on the side here which switches between NTSC and PAL. In PAL, I get no colour on my Sky Zones. If I switch to NTSC, NTSC I get colour. But, but on the B-Rotor over here, which I'm working on at the moment, on the B-Rotor has the same camera. The switch there gives me colour on both. So obviously there is something else here causing a problem with the colour in the Sky Zones. So it's, it's I don't know what it is, but suffice to say, maybe it's just a faulty part, maybe it's that video transmitter, but if this was a, uh, a conventional piece of kit, I could swap out the video transmitter and put in another one, see if it was the video transmitter, but because this is a proprietary special video transmitter made solely for the Lightning 210 or 220, I can't do a damn thing. I don't have a spare one of these, and, and just to change it, is, it's, I've got to unsolder all these wires, it's just... No, sorry, you can, you can hear my frustration welling up, can't you? So, DYS, um, you should make a racing mini quad, because you haven't yet, obviously. Um, harsh, I know, but there you go. If you want a good quad for flying line of sight, and you've got a lot of money to spend, this is probably going to be just fine. But if you want a racing quad where you can put a receiver inside, because I mentioned in my last video that putting a receiver inside this thing wasn't really going to happen. I'm just going to take it off the bottom, because I, th I think... Maybe some people didn't believe me, but here is a D4R2, which could also be an X4R, and there is just nowhere. The camera is up front here, so I can't fit it in there. It won't go sideways because the pins would poke out. The frame is not high enough to put it in the middle here. See that it would be too high on the flight controller. There's no room at the back also for the same reason. The, the capacitors on the flight controller are too high, and there's just no room around that video transmitter. There's nowhere to put this tiny little receiver can't even put it on its side because there's so the if we look at it here if 
I try and put it on the side. There is a plastic thing there, stops it from fitting in. Look, there's just no way this baby's going to fit anywhere in this frame. It's just not going to fit. It's too tall that way. Yeah. So they built a mini quad. You can't put a, anything other than a tiny, tiny receiver. And I've got one of these. Um, where have I put it? Uh, over here. One of these, this is the equivalent of the X, XS4R, X4R, XSR4. But even this, even this is a bit of a nightmare. How would you, this is, look at this, the tiny little receiver. Where am I going to put that? Will it fit in here? It might. It might just fit in there if I, no, it's still too high. See, it's still too high at the back there. It's not going to fit that way. Will it fit? No, it won't fit that way. Won't. Look, even the, even the <laughs> XSR, you cannot fit it in here. It will not fit. There's just no room to fit an XSR. If I put it there, what's going to happen with the camera? It might, no, we've got these big dangly pins. Look, see these big dangly pins? They're going to crush that receiver. They might just, it might just fit right up the front there. But, oh, really? Come on, DYS. Um, you need to hire someone that knows how to build stuff, how to design stuff, because this is just a fail on so many levels, which is frustrating because it's so close on so many levels. It would, if you just spent a little more time, as I said in my other video, you'd have a really nice mini quad. But here, nah, it's good for parts, I suppose. No, nah, it's not even then. These ESCs can't use them on anything. They're just all proprietary. Motors, good motors, brilliant motors, good props. It's as far as it goes, I'm sorry. I can't recommend this product. I spent two days trying to make it work properly, and I failed. So I give up. If you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. And I do thank DYS for sending this in, but I really wish they had tested it and, and done the job properly to start with. Thank you for watching. Time for me to clear the bench and get back to work. Bye for now.